everyone. Uh, my name is Stuart Alsop, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the spine and offer a few exercises for you to find your own spine and how it moves. <clears throat> if you sit most of your day, your spine is probably locked in a habitual pattern of posture. Uh, mine was for a long time, uh, and now I have learned a lot of exercises and information to figure out how to unlock it. Um, I want to share these with you today. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, and if you enjoy this video, please consider following me on Instagram at Yoga Stu. Uh, so the spine is a set of 24 different vertebrae uh, that attach your spinal cord from the brain all the way down to the sacrum. Uh, and so you can, you can basically um, divide the spine into four different spots. You got the cervical spine, the spine of the neck. You have the thoracic spine, the spine of the rib cage that connects to the rib cage. You have the lumbar spine, uh, and then you have the sacrum. Uh, cervical spine has seven vertebrae. Thoracic spine has 12 vertebrae, exactly as many ribs as you have um, on your spine. Lumbar spine has uh, five vertebrae. Uh, and then the sacrum has five vertebrae as well. They are all fused together. They fuse after early childhood. Um, and So what are all the ways the spine can move? Um, so you have flexion. Flexion of the spine means the angle of the joint gets smaller. So if you think I have my spine in the back here, and then if I just go like this, that's flexion of the spine. And then extension of the spine is a back bend, starting to look up, watching the roof and everything like that. Uh, and then you've got rotation of the spine, which means to rotate in the spine. And then you have side bending of the spine, which is you can bend the spine to one side or the other. And so none of these happen in isolation. If you're flexing, you might also be rotating. Um, if you're extending, you might also be rotating. Uh, in, in yoga, it's a good idea to bring awareness to what you're doing um, so as to not to injure your spine. So what is the purpose of the spine? Uh, one of the main purposes of the spine is to guard the spinal cord. Uh, the spinal cord connects our brain with the rest of our body. Uh, try touching your fingers against each other right now. Try touching your fingers together. Uh, and then just concentrate on the feeling, the sensation of touch between your fingers. Uh, and then focus on that kind of feeling as it goes into the body, up into the spinal cord, into the brain. Uh, there's nerves that, that travel all the way from here, all the way through my, my arm, back up into this, the, the um, spine here, and then up into the brain. Uh, so you can kind of get an idea of that each time you feel something, uh, each time you eat something, each time it's all nerve, basically nerves sending that signals back to your brain. Um, and they go both ways. So there's, there's the signal to the brain, which is sensory, and then there's the signal from the brain to allow me to move my finger. Uh, that's, those are afferent and efferent um, nerves. So one of the important things about the spine as well, besides just having the spinal cord, um, is movement. Uh, so it allows me to move, it allows me to walk, it allows me to turn this kind of motion um, into a fluid motion that travels throughout the body. So I'm walking around, I can, the, the spine allows for that movement and the coordination between the shoulders and the spine and the hips and the spine. So what are some exercises that you can, find, you can use to find your spine right now? Uh, so take one finger and place it right at the occiput, right here. And then find your other finger and find your coccyx. So find the very edge of your spine, basically right in between the butt cheeks, a little bit up. Um, and so now that you've kind of got an awareness of the two endpoints of the spine, now just start to move. And just feel the connection between the back of the head, the occiput, and the tailbone and just following that connection. Now, that's, so that's one exercise to find your spine. Uh, and now just go ahead and try flexing forward. Try just flexing forward and seeing what that does to your spine. Compresses the internal organs, compresses the heart, chin gum to the chest, and coming back up. And then extending. Let's, let's only focus the extension in the cervical spine or the neck right here. 
So just looking up towards the sky, you can take your hands and place them in the back of your head and just feel what's happening to the vertebrae as you look up to the sky and coming down. So that's flexion, extension. And then side or er, and then rotation, try just rotating back and forth, feeling that. And then side bending, side bending the neck. And so that's not only the neck, but it's the whole spine itself. Um, so uh, this is just an experiment to see how well, um, how well I can kind of uh, transmit what I've learned about my own body uh, to everyone else uh, who's interested. Um, a lot of, uh, a lot of people deal with chronic pain of the back. Uh, and it's a tricky thing because it's, it's, we've learned from science that chronic pain is not, um, it, it works differently than acute pain. So acute pain, you get your, you know, your, your, a cut yourself on your arm or something like that. That pain is a signal that you've just hurt yourself. Chronic pain is more tricky because chronic pain involves a lot of different sensory experiences. Uh, it's sometimes common, sometimes not related to anything specific you do. Um, so it can be really tricky to figure it out. And the best thing that I've found is to educate myself about the spine, um, educate myself about movement in general. Um, it seems that if I learn about it, then I can kind of, it dissipates, um, and I can live life in a more free, uh, way. And, uh, so yeah, if you, if, uh, you liked what I, what I just presented, uh, you can follow me on yoga at yoga stew on Instagram, um, or find my Facebook page here, uh, yoga stew. I uh, hope you enjoyed it.